Alright, what up, what up, Fight Camp World? What's going on? It's your boy Mike Rashid. Um, right now, I have my, supposed to be my 12th, 12 week checkup, but it's actually my 13th week, so I missed last week. I had a really busy week. And um, hopefully, I get the clearance to, to really throw hands again. So we'll see. My recovery has been moving along a lot faster than expected. Right now is when I was supposed to come out of my sling or the, the, robotic mechanism that they had on my arm but um but i've been out of that for a long time so now we're going to see if i can if my doctor will clear me to th start throwing punches i would have never thought there would be a specialist in just one body part but he is and he's actually really passionate about it which is awesome so i have a lot of respect for the scientific community the medical community especially the ones that really love what they do and are really passionate about it so and how i found him um, when I was uh, getting set up for surgery, we, we kind of like interviewed doctors, uh, surgeons. So don't you don't have to take the first person that they send you. So you know you can shop around because it's your health and it's important. But uh, anyway, that's what we're gonna do. So we'll see how it goes. What kind of uh, workout regimen's been going on? Uh, just normal weight training. Okay. Um, I haven't done a pull up yet. Yeah. Just kind of waiting. But I've been doing lat pulls, but only with like a like, neutral grip. Right here. Nothing like this. Okay. Because that hurts. You okay. Know? So everything like this doesn't hurt at all. Okay. Pulling like that. I'm gonna take grips so. I'm gonna shake my hand. Now go palm up. Okay. Wait, on. do I keep yeah. it? Don't resist? Yeah, resist. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Okay, go palm down. Oh my God. <laughs> you break my hand. Perfect. I don't know how you've kept your, I mean, you've kept 80% of your tone mm -hmm. and muscles yeah. down all oh, this, unbelievable. I guess, you but, know, it's been, I've been lifting weights since I was a kid, so. Yeah, it just stayed, muscle yeah. memory. Well, that's great. I mean, mm -hmm. at this point, we can lift all restrictions. Okay. Um, so I can start trying to punch? Yeah. Okay. So the things I would be careful of is, though the impact part is mm -hmm. not going to be as dangerous as a missed punch, right? Yeah, that full extension. Huh? Yeah, the full extension, okay. a missed punch, and then the recoil, yeah. right? Where it's an abrupt eccentric load bringing right. you back. Right. That's kind of where you want to be a little careful. So, okay, question on that. Yeah. When will, because the nature of a boxing match, I'm gonna miss. Yeah. When would you say it's okay to to be able to miss and recoil and all that stuff? Is there a way of finding out, like testing it? I don't know. So it's basically once you get back to when you're fully, when you're at the full same level you were training at before you injured yourself, mm -hmm. I would say you're ready. Well, but you can well, get back well, there very quickly. Well, weight training or boxing? No, training? Uh, with boxing. Okay, see, I'm not doing anything because I don't know what I can do yet. Yeah, so, so now is when I would start. Okay. Yeah. All right, so just finished up with my 13 week uh, checkup for my bicep. Um, big shout out to Newport Orthopedic. They really take care of me. Dr. Shukla is really good. He's a specialist. He's my specialist. I don't know if you heard it or not, but he cleared me. The right thing for me to do is to go and test it out. But first, we gotta make a stop. Today's my boy's birthday, my boy Sean to a body, party to a body, AKA Gator. So we're gonna get him a carrot cake right now and go uh, do a little birthday shindig at the office. You're, you're anti-fun, huh? No, no, I love fun. No, I love fun. She don't want nobody to have fun. No, I don't want nobody to get fat. Oh shit, what is that? That looks so Pineapple. good. That's healthy, that's got fruit. Yeah, exactly. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sean. Happy birthday, dear Sean. Happy birthday to you.
All right, so doctor's appointment today. The doctor gave me the green light to start back boxing training, like actually hitting the bag or hitting mitts. One thing the doctor said was to go ahead and throw the, the straight punch, the jab. Uh, but if you miss, it could be problematic because it's hyperextending the tendon, all right? I threw one jab in the whole midsection and it hurt like crazy. So it's really aching right now. It doesn't feel like something's damaged, but you know, pain is a warning from preventing an injury. So, uh, you know, I went on longer. Um, the hook didn't hurt at all. And it's ironic because the hook is how I injured my arm my bicep but uh it felt fine but i was putting my whole body behind it it wasn't an arm punch now that straight it hurts like doing this it doesn't really hurt that bad but it's an like aching it's a weird aching it's just a different type of feeling that i've ever had before so it is what it is shadow boxing afterwards it was a no-go i couldn't really throw oh just even that i couldn't throw that left like i with the speed that my brain is wanting it to go and I'm, as I'm trying, it's hurting. So, you know, it's best for me to just scale back, calm down, you know, and let it heal up a little bit more. So I'm not ready yet, but I'm not far out, you know. Everything else felt fine. Um, I wasn't I'm not tired or anything, uh, cause I've been trying to keep up with my conditioning, but it's nothing like, you will never have fight conditioning without fighting. It's not gonna happen. I don't care how much you run, do battle ropes, whatever nothing is going to get your conditioning and fight uh shape other than fighting so i can't wait to do it but anyway today was a good day shout out to my boy gator party to a body sean it's his birthday good dude uh we will have uh, a birthday dinner for him tonight but uh that's about it i'm also doing a lot of research right now because i'm putting together a documentary uh, uh i'm putting together a documentary about history about history in this country um and I think that'd be really interesting. It's been consuming a lot of my time. I feel like, you know, you guys all see what's going on in the media right now. Um, a lot of racism, uh, oppression and racism is being brought to the forefront. Um, some really horrific things have, have been happening to, you know, black people for 400 years, but people are seeing it now, you know? And I'm um, at a conversation with somebody not too long ago and they said but do people really care about george floyd like that was he that great of a guy i mean he was a criminal i said look he had a criminal record a lot of us got criminal records you know so who are we to say oh fuck this guy because he, he he did something he made mistakes we all make mistakes who am i to judge what well, people are outraged no most of us don't know him but we seen a human being die barbarically you know and the killer was very cavalier and chill about it so that resonated with everybody that saw that anybody with a soul at least but uh anyway i want to do what i can to help fight against you know oppression and racism and i think my my own opinion the way to do it for me is education is educating people on history for real because real history is not taught unfortunately and um it should be there's so much information out there that nobody cares to go and dig in, into it and re research and i love research i'm addicted to it uh that's what we do so that's consuming a lot of my time it's been all of the things that's been happening is real heavy on my heart right now because how can it not be you know i've been a victim of of police brutality when i was in college um this was in arizona arizona state and tempe I don't know how they do it now, but they used to have like a curfew certain times of the year. And we was out there close to that curfew time. And you know, the cops roll up on horses, which is really, really, really weird, you know? And uh, you know, yelling at us, you know, talking to us very disrespectfully. And uh, one grabbed my arm and I yanked away from him. And it was this, you ever see a cartoon when they get in a fight and it's like everybody jumping, it's a big, ball of smoke and a ruckus that's it felt like that's what happened to me you know they did a number on me uh one cop kept punching me over and over after they handcuffed me in my face right here my face was swollen like a pumpkin but he couldn't knock me out <laughs> but anyway it's a lot of that kind of stuff that happened not just to me but to a lot of people and it happens to white people too so 
I'm not gonna say this is not a racial thing because it is, but it happens to anybody and it shouldn't happen to nobody. We hold police to high standards and high regards. I do. I'm not one of those people that say fuck the police. You know, a lot of my close friends are in law enforcement and I respect the police. I respect law enforcement, but I don't respect the bad apples. And I don't respect cops that don't check the bad apples. You're just as bad. So I think we need a lot of uh, education because I feel like we don't get respected in this country. And if people understood our history, we have a very rich history. It would enrich you to know our contributions to this world and then our pain and suffering. You know, maybe it'll give some people some empathy. Um, I'm empathetic to a lot, to a lot of people. Anybody going through some shit, I'm there. I stand shoulder to shoulder with anybody, any race, any nationality that's going through some shit, that's being oppressed, I'm with you. I always fight against the bully, you know? So that's why I'm asking my heart um, right now. The, the current situation, you know, it reflects people that look like me. And I'm fighting because I got sons, I got friends, I got brothers. I, and then me, I, I worry about my safety as well. I just want us to be good. Um, I, I don't want to be sitting here talking about, I don't want to die unjustly. Or I don't want my kids to die unjustly. But I have to talk about it, you know. I've been making some positive head, headway. Uh, been talking with um, LAPD. As we all know, LAPD and NYPD has a history of being notorious with um, nefarious conduct and, and brutality and uh, things of that nature, but not all of them. So I'd rather go right to the source, talk to them. I'm talking with and researching various nonprofit organizations, doing my research, I'm requesting financials to see who I'm gonna align myself with, my dollars and my efforts, who I'm gonna collaborate with to get out there and press these politicians because I don't trust not one politician. Um, and whatever politician, I don't care, Republican or Democrat, I don't care what's in their heart. All I care about is if you're going to do what's best for the people, okay? We need politicians for policy, all right? Some people are like, oh, whatever, fuck them, don't give money to them, no, 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 no. If this person right here, this politician can get policy passed that positively affects us in society, I'ma lean on them. I'ma I'm put money in, uh, in their organization and behind their campaign, and I'ma stand right next to them. Like, let's go, let's go do the right thing. I don't care what they think or feel. They don't have to be genuine, it doesn't matter. What matters is the bottom line, is just us getting things going that's beneficial to everybody. I'm a peaceful person, I'm a loving person, and boxing is all different races and nationalities and genders, men and women. And a lot of us just vibe, you know? When two people is going toe to toe, suffering together, fighting honorably, after, they can hate each other going into that. Afterward, it's a respect and it's love, you know what I mean? So right now, we all we all in a fight together. Once we win this, we all gonna win. It's gonna be, we get that much closer, that much uh, uh, connected. One of the days I was out protesting, um, it was the day after the Los Angeles mayor made the, the LAPD stand down from the protest. It was super peaceful, the vibe was so dope. Unfortunately, y'all don't see it on TV, but I felt, overwhelmed with emotion at one point because I'm looking around and I'm seeing every nationality out there and it really touched me that people that are not black cared so much about something that we're dealing with you know it made me feel so good it gave me hope sometimes when I see when I read things on Twitter and on the internet I feel like there's no hope and it made me want to stay in my little world my little bubble and just not care about anything outside of my bubble my little circle but I can't I, that's not me I seen hope out there, seeing a, 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 a plethora of different races, nationalities, colors, and creeds. That made me feel really good, and it invigorated my fight. So you stand shoulder to shoulder with me, I stand shoulder to shoulder with you on your issues. You know, because this is not just a black issue, this is a human race issue. You know what I'm saying? Black people, we make up 14% of this country, but we are like 90% of the culture. Our contributions are heavy. 
We've been here since day one. We helped the Union defeat the Confederacy. We have a stake in this country. This is, we, we here, we, we bled too, you know what I'm saying? So let's, let's all get our just due. Let's all have respect for each other. Let's all have an open mind to listen to each other and to, uh, you know, have empathy and have those difficult conversations so we could begin healing because this, this country is sick. It's sick, it's disease. With hatred with, and racism. Let's eradicate that. Uh, my brother Amir and I was talking earlier and you know, he said something interesting. He said, you know, as some of these older people die out, these older racist people, you know, it's a glimmer of hope. And I hope that's the case. Um, you know, some people have been indoctrinated with hate. So, but most haven't, you know what I mean? My crew of people or friends of my, my close ones is all different colors, you know? And we all love each other like we're family, like we're blood, because we are. So I connect with good people, whatever you come from background. So anyway, I know y'all probably expected me to be all super motivational today. Talk about, you know, being headstrong and overcoming stress and obstacles. Yeah, that's an application now because we living in one of those times where we're faced with a huge impediment. A huge impediment. So that's my fight right now. And that should be all of our fights, okay? You can't sit back and like, oh, well, it ain't my problem. It is your problem. Because when people start protesting, the protests turn to riots, the riots turn to looting, vandalism, you name it. The big issue, the seed, is not the vandalism, is the rioting and the looting. That's a byproduct of all of this. You don't want it to affect you, you know what I mean? So it's a huge issue that's causing this stuff, all right? So let's focus on what's important. Let's have some unity for real. And I urge you all, I beg you, please, please stop allowing the media and politicians to divide this country. That's all they're doing. They're keeping everybody uptight, hating each other. When we should be loving each other and collaborating with each other and helping each other and having each other's backs. Because those politicians don't have your or my back. They do not care. They're in it for what they're in it for. None of us are inside, behind closed doors, knowing exactly what's going on. But I guarantee you, it's not in the best interest of the people. It's in the best interest of lobbyists that put money behind these guys. They're serving their masters. They're not serving us, that's their job. We pay taxes for them to serve us. They're not doing that. So listen, y'all, they're keeping y'all divided and separated. They, it's, a, it's a strategic plan, right? It's a brilliant, but it's a wicked plan to, of divide and conquer. Together, we're too strong. I'm talking about the American population, the people. Together, we're too strong. But we're not together. We're separated all over the place and we're weak like that. We need to come together. Red, blue, fuck all of that shit. Democrat, Republican, y'all should, people should stop being loyal to these political parties. Be loyal to what's right, what's best for you and your family and for your neighbors. That's what you should be loyal to. Not a political party and a candidate that just happens to represent the political party or the team that you grew up rooting for. It's really silly when you think about the, the, the things that keep people divided, the issues that keep people divided. Man, I could go on for days about this, I'm so passionate about it, but I think y'all get what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I'm gonna end this right here. So y'all stop letting the bad news, because we can't call news news, it's bad news bad news, the media, stop letting it divide y'all and making y'all hate each other. Put pressure on these damn politicians. Alright? Alright, we out.